the submicroscopic world of atoms and molecules is incredibly dirty. Even the purest of materials, something like a single crystal of silicon used in computer chips, still typically contains impurities. And these impurities can have an impact on the properties of materials. So while our ideal of a crystalline material is a regular lattice of repeating units throughout the entire material, extremely pure single crystals containing no imperfections are extremely rare. And we, do, we need to understand those imperfections if we want to be able to explain and rationalize the behaviors and the properties of crystalline materials that are not perfectly pure. And to begin to understand this, we're going to look in this video at defects. Defects are imperfections in the structures of crystalline solids. And there are three types of defects that we're going to want to pay attention to in crystal structures. There are, first of all, vacancies. If an atom or a molecule is simply missing from a spot where it should be and nothing else is filling that space, we have what's called a vacancy. And a vacancy may have an impact on the surrounding atoms or molecules, for example, pulling them in a little bit closer around that hole that's created, which sort of has a ripple effect, right? The vacancy can have a ripple effect on atoms and molecules surrounding its position. We also have the possibility of impurities coming in. There are tiny spaces between the atoms and molecules in a crystal. There's empty space inside a crystal where the atoms or molecules aren't sitting or between them. Right? And very small atoms and molecules can occupy the positions between the larger atoms or molecules in the crystalline lattice. These impurities are known as interstitial impurities. They tend to be quite small because they're sitting in those empty spaces between atoms or molecules in a larger crystalline lattice. We also can have what are called substitution or substitutional impurities where a different atom or molecule takes the place of one of the atoms or molecules in the larger crystalline lattice. So for example, we can have substitutional impurities where the substituting atom or molecule is on the same order in terms of size as the atoms or molecules in the crystalline lattice. That's represented here in red, where an atom that's of comparable size to the blue-green atoms is sitting at what would otherwise be a vacancy, is one way to think about it. However, substitutional impurities can also be somewhat larger, and in this case, they have a big disruptive effect on the crystalline lattice in the vicinity of the impurity. So here, this yellow atom is much, much larger than the blue-green atoms, and we can see that it is disrupting the crystalline lattice profoundly around it. It's, it's having very much a ripple effect on the atoms around it in the lattice. So these defects can affect the properties of crystals in profoundly important ways, affecting properties like conductivity, strength, you know, whether the material is brittle, malleable, things like this. Sometimes defects are put in by design. So for example, interstitial impurities can have a positive effect on the material. I don't want to leave you with the impression that defects are always bad. Interstitial impurities in things like alloys, steel being a great example, can be profoundly useful and can actually give us positive material benefits. So we can use defects to our advantage in material design, and that's worth keeping in mind when we're thinking about ways to improve crystalline solids.